one of the big changes that CSS Grid brings to the web is that it, it's now possible to have white space in our designs. This is Leila and Massimo Vanelli, very famous for lots of design work, including graphic design work. The Vanellis were very into using a grid for their design work and evangelized this idea that was popular among, especially among very famous designers in the mid 20th century, to use grids in this very particular way. They put out a book called The Vanelli Canon, really great little book. It's actually available for free as a PDF from the Vanelli website. And in it, there's this quote, Great designs can be achieved without the use of the grid, but the grid is a very useful tool to guarantee results. Ultimately, the most important tool is the management of the white space in layouts. It is the white space that makes the layout sing. Bad layouts have no space left for breathing. Every little space is covered by a cacophony of type sizes, images, and screaming titles. That sounds familiar to me. Every little space covered by a cacophony of stuff cramming in, trying to get attention. That is what is very common in web design, where, especially when there's sidebars and there's lots of ads and there's just like layer upon layer of things next to each other just demanding attention, uh, we don't really have white space in our designs. Part of the reason that we don't is because of the way that floats work. We've been using floats in this mechanism of floating content in order to do layouts. And the way that floats work, it's really almost like having a giant bathtub full of bars of soap, thousands of bars of soap, and every one of those is trying to float up to the top of the water. There's no way to kind of get things to lay out further down the page. Everything just wanted to float up. Responsive web design was really just making the bathtub squishy and those bars of soap rejigger, but it's still everything trying to get to the top of the page. CSS Grid has a completely different model. You actually define columns and you define rows. Having rows changes everything, not only because we can line things up in a horizontal direction, although you can use Grid to do that, but because it gives us the opportunity to define a row and even leave it empty and put something further down the page or put one thing here and then something else here and something else here and just add space into our layouts and really make them sing. So let me show you this basic example of how it is that this works, why it works. So here I am at labs.jensimmons.com. I'm gonna uh, inspect the element in Firefox. Firefox, of course, is where we have the CSS Grid Inspector tool. And I'm in Firefox Nightly so that I can get to this layout panel. Maybe by the time you watch this video, the layout panel will be in every copy, every version of Firefox. But if you open up the regular Firefox and it's not there, then go get yourself Nightly so that you have this extra tool. I come here to check this box and see the actual grid. And I can click on this target here and it jumps to this unordered list that is our grid container. We go back over to rules. I can see here display grid. Okay, so that is the mechanism of grid. And without it, this is the layout that you get. It's just talking about basic flow layout. I turn grid back on and I get the grid based layout. And you can see here I've got four columns of one FR each being defined grid template columns, repeat for one FR, which basically says, I want you to make four columns. I want them to each have a fraction of the total space that's available. And then each of these list items is being placed on the grid. So we can look here at this first item where grid column two slash three and grid row one slash two means that this particular item is gonna start on column line two and run to column line three. It's gonna start on grid row one and go to grid row two. Anytime that you explicitly place items on a grid, you're able to tell the browser where to put it. And in that case, you'll have the ability to create white space. The other way to do a layout using CSS Grid is to not explicitly place those items, but to let the grid auto placement algorithm place them, in which case there's not going to be white space. You're going to just have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They're all going to kind of be packed up into the flow. Um, but if you use explicit placement, you can use white space in basically any way that you want. So let's make layouts that have more breathing room, 
that have more of the opportunity to focus on what's important, that allow people to scroll. People scroll. Studies show that users have no problem whatsoever scrolling now. So don't be afraid to take content and spread it out into the space, the vertical space that's available. You don't have to shove everything at the top. People will scroll. They'll get down to wherever it is that they're looking, whatever it is that they're looking for, wherever it is on your page that they need to be. Um, white space, I really do think it's going to change layout and graphic design on the web.